I gotta be honest with you guys. I didn't even look at this listing past the title, price, and the first picture. All I know is it's a big penis server, it's got a fair amount of capacity, and it's a sand, which is something that we've never really had an opportunity to touch on before. I didn't think they were actually gonna accept the offer. Tell me this, Jake, is it even possible we bought something useful? I've got the listing here. I didn't really look at it that much either. I just saw that it was $5,000 and you said offer $1,000 and then he said yes. Here we are. I mean, how much of that are we even getting? That's just a picture of a rack. Are we? He wanted us to take the whole rack. Shut up. And I was like, mm. he agreed to let us not take the rack. We're just taking what's inside. That's good. I don't think that rack would even fit in the truck, but does that mean that they expect us to take all of that equipment? Is that all even J-Bots? Yeah. It, well, it's, what's that thing in the bottom? It's four J-Bots and the controller server. <laughs> the best part is it's 96 hard drives, but they're 600 gig hard drives, so the total Wait. capacity is like 60 terabytes. <laughs> we could replace this entire thing with like three hard drives now. We could replace this entire thing with two of those Kyoxia SSDs. And it would be faster. And it would be faster. So I talked to the guy on the phone a little bit. This company, they're about 100 people, so similar size as us, yeah. but they're moving from in office to work from home. They took okay. all of their server equipment and put it in a data center. For a thousand bucks, it's kind of a steal. This is a steal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even ignoring the drives, because those are basically worthless. Like, how many hours do those have on them? Probably a lot. 600 gigabyte drives, you said? Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the disc shelves themselves, I've seen go for 500 to to $1,000 each on eBay, because they're really useful for home lab. It's like the cheap way to get a bunch of storage. You buy one of these, you put an HBA in your server, and there you go. You one cable out to... 24 yeah. drives. 24 drives. Yeah. They didn't just sell it to us because they knew the channel or whatever, did they? No, no, no. He did say that he recognized us, but it was after. Right. Oh, there's the other thing. These are going to be SAS drives. Oh. That's yeah. actually kind of an inconvenience because it means that if we just wanted to give them away at the Christmas party, people couldn't even plug them into anything. I think they're dual controller as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're SAS. Shut up. So this, it's like a redundant link to the drives. Oh, that's awesome. So if one of the controllers goes down, you're good. 96 more drive bays. And that takes up what, 16 U's then? Yep. It's one of those super micro 90 bays, basically. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the most space efficient, but hey, we just got a free rack. MSI, meet the MAG Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi. It's got support for the latest Intel CPUs and DDR5 memory, premium thermal control with an extended heatsink, a server grade six layer PCB, and even more features to elevate your gaming experience. Check out MSI Z790 Tomahawk Wi-Fi at the link below. We're shooting on iPhone. Ha, huh. oh, and we're not even gonna be able to hide it. <laughs> we have a real camera. It's just going to take too long to set up, and it took a long time to get here, so we're in a hurry. Hey, how's it going? Ooh. Hi! Oh, wait, did you bring money? Oh, me. You take e-transfer, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, God, you're shorter than I thought you would be. <laughs> Ouch! Damn! Cool. I am loving the vibe here already. Look at this cable management. Everyone knows it's better to have your Wi-Fi access point up high. What better way to get it up high than two cardboard boxes? <laughs> it's almost like no one's actually been working here since the COVID lockdown and they just had to wait out the expiry of their lease. <laughs> Ooh, we got some PDUs. Yep. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And this is it. Wow, it came with the whole rack. This is yeah. the big boy. Okay, so. Put that in your Prius, right? Ugh, I mean, it no. Was a, it was uh, a Civic, but all right. Yeah. <laughs> this has got to be at least 10 years old. Is that about Did right? Did you guys buy it new? Yes. What was this, what was this worth? At least a hundred. <laughs> well, hey, that's, uh, this is the definition of pennies on the dollar then. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, yes, my hired guns. Get it? Hired guns? Oh, 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 it's a, yeah, two tickets. Yes, I got you. Well, what? I'm not going to do it. Look at this. More like uh, pea shooters. How the devil are we going to get this out of here? <laughs> we were told there was a cart. Yes. Yeah, we have a cart. Oh, there's a cart. Yeah, there's a cart. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's a quality cart. Oh, yeah, yeah. Handcrafted, or at least hand yeah, upgraded. Hand We've got a couple of options at this point. I don't think there's any getting around pulling the servers out, okay. but we're not actually obligated to take away the rack. It's only if we need another rack. Do uh, we need another rack? No. Could we use another rack? I mean, we could always find use for it. Didn't we just buy a rack? 
I see. Should we take the rack if it's a quality rack? I mean, it's a NetApp rack. It's probably good. So the, the, the bed of the truck is technically available. I mean, it's basically what we, what we saw in the ad, right? <laughs> Oh, As expected, the drives are 600 gigabytes, but you were wrong. What? They are 15,000 RPM. This what? is what passed for high performance storage before solid state got affordable enough that you could actually deploy it in a, as a smaller medium business. I'm trying to see if there's, oh yeah, June 11th, 2012. That's 10 years ago. 11 years ago. Yeah. Wait, is that the manufacturer date on the cold spares? Oh. Wait, Whew. Yep, these are cold spares, the ones sitting here. Oh, this one's different. Smart, responsible people. This is a 2.5 inch one, but also from 2012. That was probably one we got from uh, warranty. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah, they did that oh. September oh. 2012. Has this been on since then, pretty much? Since pretty you much. got it consistently? So these drives probably have like eight or nine years of like consistent running. I'm trying to find the date code on this one. This looks a lot newer. Oh yeah, I mean that's branded Seagate Exos. It's not, yeah. even, it's not even a Hitachi one like this. Uh, September 2019 on this one. Apparently this has been losing drives at a rate about once a month last year and then it's been better behaved this year. Oh, oh there we go. There's the fascia of the control. It's kind of cute, hey? I miss when servers had swag like this. Everything's really chaotic today, so you're gonna see me refer to notes on my phone. Don't worry about it. Some of you are probably asking yourselves, what the heck is a SEN? Well, anytime you've got a lot of machines, be they servers, workstations, or even individual client stations, you're going to need storage. And one of the ways to do that is to put all of the storage in those individual machines. But from a hardware maintenance standpoint, that can be really inconvenient because anytime you've got any sort of failure, well, you have to go in and you have to swap that storage out. Not to mention that the provisioning of that storage can be really inconvenient. Maybe one person needs a lot, maybe one person needs a little, maybe now those needs have completely reversed. Now, one way to work around that is to deploy a NAS, and that's what we do back at our studio. So essentially, we've got a machine that looks pretty much the same as this. We've got a head unit that acts as a controller, and then we've got these shelves that are full of what are called JBODs, which are just just a bunch of disks, actually, that's what JBOD stands for. So each of these four U's is just power and drives. That's it, there's no logic. All of that is handled by this guy. The difference then is how the storage gets accessed. Our NAS is at the office. Like most that operate in a Windows client environment, use SMB as their network file transfer protocol. And SMB and NASs in general are great. You could think of a NAS as kind of like a hard drive that 10 or 20 or 50 different people can all plug into at once and read from and write to, according to their user permissions, at the same time, even reading the same files at once. But it comes with some downsides. So for one thing, file locking. If two people have the same file open and they both try to save it at the same time, you're gonna end up with a conflict. So it has protections in place that, well, lower performance. SMB also uses the TCP IP protocol for communication, which, compared to just plugging a drive directly in your system is much higher latency, which makes it totally unsuitable for booting your system off of. I mean, you could run Windows over SMB in the same way that you could run Windows off of an SD card, but we've shown you guys that it's really not a very good idea. Now let's talk about SAN. This is more like taking your drive or your 96 drives and slicing them up into 10 pieces or 20 or 50 pieces. You take those pieces and you allocate them to VMs or bare metal servers or workstations or whatever you want. And unlike SMB, they are getting block level access to that storage. Obviously, there's still a performance penalty from using shared storage because if some other client is hitting the exact same drive as you, well, that head's gotta seek, right? But by building gigantic arrays, by filling them full of high performance drives, these run at 15,000 RPM. That is more than double even a performance consumer drive. Theoretically, you can mitigate a lot of those performance concerns. Also, because you're not using TCP IP, you guys I'm assuming were just plugged in using like iSCSI over ethernet. Yeah, you're using a completely different protocol, the same one that you would be using with a direct attached drive. Sort of, sort of, sort of. We don't actually use SCSI in desktops anymore, but you get the point. Making for a connection that is so low latency that those computers have no idea they don't just have a drive in them. And under ideal conditions, your performance could actually be better. 
I mean, your bandwidth is going to be limited by your Ethernet connection. But say, for example, you were hitting a huge data set with a ton of random reads and writes, this would absolutely slay a hard drive that's just plugged into your computer. I mean, look at it. Yeah, look at it. We got to get this thing out of here. Yeah. Yes, it is. And we actually brought some for you guys as well. So awesome. hope you enjoy them. They're great for everything from building PCs to, you know, adjusting the cabinets in your kitchen to, well, really anything a screwdriver does. And three for you. He made fun of me for being short. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really heavy. Jake, grab an end. Okay, wow, you just sent Sick. that, hey? Jeez. Yeah, yeah, no, I had it, I had it. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> Another advantage of a SAN is reliability. Individual drives can fail, I already mentioned that, but if it's in a device like this, there's all kinds of redundancy in place to keep your entire operation from grinding to a halt. For starters, this is cool, our controller isn't actually one computer. It's two computers, ah, here we go, that are working together in such a way that if one of them goes down, the whole system stays up. And pretty much every aspect of the system is architected just like that. For example, the drives themselves are dual interface drives, meaning that two separate controllers, this is freaking wild, can plug into this drive at the same time. Meaning that if your controller dies, so that is the actual card inside the JBOD that's plugged into this drive, there's a separate controller that's also plugged into this drive. Then there's the fact that there's all these drives, right? So they're obviously running some kind of, I mean, this is what, NetApp, so some kind of proprietary RAID. RAID 10, okay. Oh, you guys have RAID 10 it. Yeah. That's wild. You guys could lose literally half of these drives before you'd lose any data. Assuming right, they failed optimally. Or you could lose an entire JBOD, yeah. but that would be pretty hard because, let's go look at the JBODs. Ah, everything is so cool. Each of them has not one, not two, not three, but four flipping power supplies. And I'm willing to bet you could lose two of these before you would actually lose power to this thing. Oh, it would have to be the optimal two though. It would have to be this one and this one, or this one and this one, not this one and this one, by the look of things. We haven't actually opened these up yet. We'll have to do that back at the office. We gotta get out of these fine folks' hair very soon here. Wait a second. Now, hold on a second. Why is there an RC car battery in here? <laughs> what the, tr oh, that makes sense. Cause this is running old school hardware RAID. So you've got a big fat RAID controller on this card right here. And then you've got a battery backup so that if there's any data in flight and the server loses power, it can store it temporarily uh, on the RAM cache. So that, yeah, this RAM is actually installed on the read card. So if there's any data in flight there, that's a write cache, it'll flush it to the disk once power's restored. Hilarious. The presence of the controller in the head unit means I might be wrong about the dual controller thing I said earlier about these JBODs. Do not leave this bay empty. Uh-oh. It's empty. <laughs> oh, I get it. This is a placeholder. SBB2 blank. Oh. Do not leave it empty. It's probably a cooling uh, airflow routing issue. <laughs> what the hell? Uh, did you look at the, you didn't pull one of these out? No, I didn't. Oh my God. What? This is only a 580 watt power supply. Are you kidding me? We literally have power supplies and servers that are this big. They're like a thousand, 2, 1300. Watts. What that, oh, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> not very dense. <laughs> Compensating for something? <laughs> something to note is all the hard drives we transport on this thing are probably toast. Uh, there's that, that anecdotal thing where some big Silicon Valley company moved a bunch of drives like across IBM. the park. Was it IBM? Yeah, moved a bunch of drives across the parking lot and then like 30% of them failed within the next couple months or something. I forget the numbers. Yeah. On solid casters, so they switched to using like rubber chunky tires and then it's fine. Yeah. This, uh, that was also a really ooh. long time ago, so it, it's probably that hard drive tech has gotten better. These drives are a really long time ago. And there's other benefits of SAN that I haven't even touched on yet. For administrators, having all your storage in one place is great for both maintaining security within your organization and maintaining your backups. So instead of having backups flying around on the network all the time, backups are just done from drive to drive. So fast. Hey, Jamie. Hi. That's a boss, man. Let's get this. Oh, that is very heavy. Yeah, it's not too bad, though. 
Okay, all of which raises a really big question. With all these benefits of SAN, why is it that I've been so dismissive of the technology every time someone has suggested that Linus Media Group should use it? It certainly would have saved us a lot of hours for replacing drives, reimaging windows, just stupid IT busy work. But that actually leads us into why we've never used one. Until you reach a certain size of organization to the point where you've got people dedicated on site who understand the architecture and can maintain it, a SAN can actually add more complexity and more work than it will save you compared to a NAS. And for us, because all of our editors work on the same project, sometimes at different stages in the editing pipeline, having individual storage pools that then they would transfer projects from one to the next, it's not actually more efficient. So for us, NAS is still the way. But that doesn't mean that SAN doesn't still have a place. A modern SAN might have multiple tiers. So for example, you could have a high-speed flash SAN that is the boot drives for all of your system, or that you could allocate storage from for uh, high-performance applications like running a database or running simulations on giant data sets. Then it would have logic built in that takes data that's not being frequently accessed and demotes it to lower speed magnetic storage. Or after that, eventually, essentially archives it to a tape library. Just because these are kind of outdated units doesn't mean that the concept of having all of your storage centralized is outdated at all. And in fact, we saw a deployment like this when we checked out SFU's supercomputer a couple of years ago. I mean, the SAN thing really is just describing how the clients connect to it. I know, that's why people getting so upset at us for not running a SAN. I mean, I haven't even gotten into the maintenance contracts. Because <laughs> we could have a SAN that's yes. just our server running iSCSI. Yeah, just running TrueNAS scale. With, and connecting with iSCSI. Hey, it's a SAN. In now. fact, we will probably set that up for the LAN machines at my house when we eventually put in those one new LAN Why machines. Why not every computer in your house? You already have 10 gig to everything. Why not every computer in the office? Just iSCSI is easy enough to set up that you could probably do it yourself with a couple tutorials on YouTube. And you could use your NAS to just use part of your storage in a SAN type of configuration. It's really just about the connection. <laughs> so these are nothing special then? Yeah. I mean, the controller, I don't even know if we can like just install Linux on it. It might be very, yeah. do, you, do you guys know? I, could you just like install like Ubuntu on that controller? No? Yeah. It's probably pretty locked down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's not the only thing about this that is kind of locked down. These are SAS drives. You wouldn't find 15,000 RPM SATA drives. And SAS has some advantages for enterprise use, but it has some disadvantages. For one thing, I can't just take these drives and plug them into a random SATA controller on a motherboard. SATA controllers can't talk to them. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that these JBODs are totally useless to us. We use almost all SATA drives. Some SAS controllers will talk to SATA drives. So these are e-waste. These might not be. I mean, we could also just get SAS drives. Oh, they're so expensive. How many clients did you guys have running off of this thing? Uh, we had 10 uh, Dell servers running VMware. Oh. Okay, so these didn't serve any workstations or anything like that. It was just all for those servers. All for those servers, yeah. There cool. was some file sharing, but it was mainly all through the VMs through the servers. That makes sense. Oh, that's something I didn't even mention earlier. Just because you have a SAN doesn't mean you don't also have NASes. So in this case, the SAN acted as storage for a file server that could then act as a NAS for all the other clients on the network. Neat, right? They're offering us more stuff. Hold on a second, hold on. Vending machines, boardroom tables. Is that pool table available? No, one of the guys got it on our internal draw. Ah, uh, ooh, that seems <laughs> unlikely. My goodness. No, we've been trying. So I'm afraid Holy that my e -peen is simply not large enough to contain this table. So I'll tell you what, Jake. What? Between you and me, Yvonne and I are thinking of moving again. Jeez. Okay, we're gonna move into a real mansion this time. I'm thinking this dining room table. So, okay, but we'll embed yeah. a bunch of tech so wait, in it. Wait, wait, wait. I want, Does I want this mean little. I get to put stackers in the garage? I want little pop up screens at every place thing, or like little like iPad holders. You're not answering so you can... my question. <laughs> we're not putting a stacker in my garage and we're not moving. <laughs> he says it, but just wait. We were, we were trying to find drives for this thing because it has a different block size. 
So are they we would buy them, and people have reformatted them so they'll work on a PC, mm, but you can't no. go back. Yet another reason to all of those who have asked why I never just bought a proper stand appliance. Oh, okay, I'm coming. Here comes the rack. Here comes the rack, boys. How exactly were you guys planning to put the rack in here? It looks a little tall. It's gonna stick out a bunch, and then you have the straps holding it. Oh, okay. Okay, can you hold the, yeah, you hold the cart. I got these. Oh, God. Well, no, no, I, we should each take an end. Okay, no, no, I mean, really, can you, okay, I don't, workplace injury, it's just me, okay. Did it you bite okay? you? Yeah. You all right? Okay. Yeah, I'll be. On the one hand, we got $5,000 worth of equipment for $1,000. On the other hand, they admitted when we were leaving that they had no idea it was listed for $5,000. It was apparently supposed to be listed for $500. Uh, <laughs> Did he say that? Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, I, I didn't hear him say 500. Yeah. Oh. But. But they also gave us a bunch of stuff that otherwise would have ended up being e-wasted. We got a couple of pretty decent PDUs. Uh, we got the rack, which is worth way more than 500 bucks to the right buyer. I mean, and the, the disc shelves are worth at least a thousand bucks too. Oh yeah. Probably a thousand bucks US. Not bad. Yeah. Not we, bad. I'm pretty happy. Happy to tell you about our sponsor. Pulseway. Are you tired of having to be at a desk all day to manage your IT systems? With Pulseway's IT monitoring and management software, you can control your IT systems from anywhere, even from your phone. Imagine being out with friends and being able to distract yourself from the ridiculous thing Amy just said by checking in on your computer systems. Wow, they really know their audience. These talking points, though. Uh, thanks, Pulseway. And with real-time alerts and notifications, you can know right away if something goes wrong. Pulseway is like having your own personal IT superhero, ready to fix any problem without you even having to do anything. And it won't even complain. It's super easy to use and can be accessed from any device. But the best part is you can try Pulseway for free. Just click the link below to start your free trial today and you'll be a tech genius in no time. If you guys enjoyed this video, I can't promise anything quite like it, but maybe, uh, maybe check out Scrapyard Wars. You probably dig that vibe.